Hello, good evening, everybody out there. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. We thank God for another day. We thank God for his grace. We thank God for his power. We thank God for his mercy over our life. We bless God because God has been faithful to us in Jesus' mighty name. Tonight, I just want to share some stuff that God has put on my heart uh, in a couple of years that I'm trying to write a book about that I call false witnesses. Uh, false witnesses. I think it's a major um, epidemic in our society today. Uh, we are living in a society that if you want to be great, you got to find a way and lie on people. Um, and uh, if you want that, you check the, all the politicians of our time, of our days that are winning election, you got to find depth on people so that you can win election. If you want to be an elder, if you want your church to grow, if you want people to like you, uh, I've come to realize that you got to find a way to lie on people so that you will do well in life. And as a result of that, we are... Um, we are eliminating the presence of God with us because God does not like us destroying each other's life. If you read the book of um, Proverbs chapter 6, verse number uh, 16 through 19, he talked about six things that the Lord hates. There are six things that God hates. God hates six things. And the Bible says there is seven one that is abominable unto God. That is false witness against one another or a lying tongue. Uh, the Bible says that thou shalt not bear forth witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not bear forth witness against thy neighbor. Uh, one of the reasons why we are not experiencing the power of God of our time and of our days is because there is so much lies in the system that people are being hurt by one another. And, and whereby people are hurting one another, whereby people are lying about one another, we don't see the power, the grace, and, and the strength of God among us. The Bible says how good and pleasant it is, how good and pleasant it is that brethren dwell together. Uh, the Bible says it is like an oil that runs through the head of Aaron, through his garment to his beard. That means when we live in peace, when we live in harmony, when we support one another, we see the presence and the power of God. Church, if we prayed and if we fast, we can dance as much as we want. We can pray as much as we want. We can prophesy as much as we want. We can do as much as we want. We are waiting for the revival. But I want you to understand that we are not going to experience the revival of God until we speak truth about each other. Until we support each other. Until we love each other. Until we encourage each other. you got to understand that before the Pentecost, before um, the Holy Ghost came, the Bible said they were dwelling in peace. It was peace that brought the revival. It wasn't, it wasn't lying. It wasn't, it wasn't deception. It wasn't anything that they were killing each other. They were living in peace. They were supporting one another. They, they were encouraging one another. One of them's problem became each another's burden. Are you here with me? Each one of them problem became each one of them's burden. That means your problem is my problem. That means your burden is my burden. That means your sorrow is my sorrow. If the church will return to that place, whereby we will love one another, whereby we will support one another, whereby we will encourage one another, I guarantee you that we are going to experience the power, the anointing, and the grace of God. Whether there is so much division, there is so much deception, there is so much lying, we eliminate the presence of God. Because God does not dwell among confusion. He is not the author of confusion. God wants us to love and support one another. You will understand, ladies and gentlemen, that Joseph went into prison for a sin that he did not commit. I say it again. Joseph went into prison for a sin that he did not commit. It was a lie that sent a great man to prison. That is what is happening in our time and in our days. 
We are destroying the potential and the great people that God has placed among us. The enemy has found a way to infiltrate into the camp of believers. Not only the camp of believers, but in this world. That you will understand that you got to be a good liar. You got to be a good deceiver to reign in the time that we are living in. I say it again. You got to be a good deceiver. You got to be a good liar. To be a leader in the time that we are living in. Because people believe in drama. People like drama. People want to hear bad stuff about people. So if you know how to manufacture bad stuff and put it on people, people will buy it easily. But it is so sad that the church has, has bought into this deception that the enemy is using of our time. But we're not supposed to lie on anybody. We're supposed to encourage one another. We're supposed to help one another. We're supposed to lift one another's up. We're supposed to, to, to encourage one another. But you've got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that if we continue to buy into this deception, all of us are at risk. Mm. i say it again. If we continue to buy into this deception of the enemy and not using the discernment that God has given unto us, to discern between lies and truth, to discern between false and right, we all of us are in trouble because today is somebody, tomorrow is going to be you. <laughs> today is somebody, tomorrow is going to be you. The enemy is going to go after your dream. The enemy is going to go after your destiny. The enemy is going to go after your finances. The enemy is going to go after your promotion. The enemy is going to go after everything that God has destined for you. But what he's going to do, he's going to use people around you and people beyond you to light on you, to destroy your potential, to destroy the destiny that God has destined you to be. you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, it's what lies and deception that calls the people to kill Jesus. The Pharisees and the scribes sat somewhere and they orchestrated lies. They sat somewhere and said, listen, this guy is becoming too powerful. If we don't find something on him for the people to believe, he is going to take over. Jesus is becoming too powerful. He is performing the miracles. He speaks right. He is delivering people from bondage. He prophesies right. This guy is too good and we believe he is of God. But the only way we can eliminate him, the only way we can destroy him, the only way we can get him out of the system for us to rule and for us to win is to form and orchestrate lies and put it on him. If we are able to do that, let's sell the lies and let the people believe in it. If the people believe in it, then the people will kill him. My goodness, my goodness. The very people that Jesus fed, the very people Jesus prayed for, the very people Jesus healed, are the same people that said crucify him. The same people that say Hosanna. The same people that say hallelujah. The same people that were with him said crucify him. What happened? Because the people bought the lies that the, the scribes and the Pharisees sold to them. My God, my God. My God, the people bought the lies and the deception that the Pharisees sold to them that Jesus said ABC and therefore the very people that love him turn against him. The very people that were with him turn against him. I want you to understand ladies and gentlemen, if we don't pray and stay still and seek the face of God, the enemy is using deception and lies to destroy the church and to destroy the world that we are living in. It is about time that we pray and use our discernment to check every information that comes to us before we spread it out. I say it again. It is about time we pray and use the discernment that God has given to us before we spread information about people that is not true. If us, if all of us were living in the days of Jesus, we would have been with the people that said crucify him. 
The further you believe the lies that have been told about the pastor, the further you can believe the lies that have been told about the prophet, the further you believe the lies that have been told about your brother and your sister in the house of God, it's a major sign to me that you would have believed that the lies that was told about Jesus. All of us, like I said, are in trouble based on the fact that the enemy is using this to destroy a lot of generals and a lot of people that God has designed to be a blessing to us. Now we can see a lot of people taking place in this world. They are not supposed to, but because they know how to lie. If you know how to lie, you can fill your church up. <laughs> if you know how to deceive, you can be a leader of a nation. If you know how to lie and, and orchestrate evil on people, you can be a leader somewhere. Either a governor, a senator, whatever it is. During campaign of people becoming whatever they want to be, you will realize that people can orchestrate lies and later on, the voters find out, oh my God, what we heard about that man or that woman wasn't true. But it is too late. You voted a wrong people into power because you bought into lies without you investigating Without you getting to the, to, 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 to the truth of the whole situation. And I'm telling you church. It is about time because the enemy is using this strategy. To destroy the church. The enemy is using this strategy. False witnesses. Deception. Lies to destroy the world that we are living in. And I said to you wherever that you are. If we want to live in a better world, if we want to see revival in the time and the days that we are living in, if we want to see the church full of his power and of his glory, let us return to divine order. Let us begin to love one another. Let us begin to defend one another. Let us begin to encourage one another. Let us pray for one another and let us support one another. If we don't do that, the enemy will take advantage of us. The enemy will go ahead of us and destroy. Or by the time we realize, all of us have been destroyed by the enemy. And let me help you to understand. Anytime God sees that, he redraw himself from us. The reason why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah was because they were evil to each other. The reason why God caused the flood to destroy in the days of Noah, because the, word, the Bible said every imagination of man was evil. <laughs> every imagination, every imagination, who had they imagined? They were not imagining anything against God, but their imagination against one another. They are taught against one another. They are plans against one another was evil. God sat in heaven. He was displeased. With the way we were treated, that men was treating men, and therefore God said, I regret, I repented for making men, and therefore I will wipe men from the, the face of this earth. We are praying for revival, church, and we want revival to hit the church. I'm telling you, we see that we are not experiencing the power that we want in church. We go to church and we go home the same. We are not experiencing his glory, his presence, his power, his deliverance, his blessing because the, the sons and the daughters of God are hurting one another. There are a lot of people that are hurt in church today that they don't even want to go to church anymore. Because once you step in the church and you are too powerful, you know how to sing, you know how to preach. Maybe you get something that people don't have. What they're going to do is to find some way to eliminate you. <laughs> to find some way. Find something to put it on you. So that you will not exist anymore. And when you don't exist, they rule. And I pray to God, ladies and gentlemen, I come before you as a prophet of God. If we really want to see power... If we really, really want to see his presence, if we really want to see his glory, 
If we really want to see deliverance, let's return to God. Let's return to God by loving one another, by supporting one another, by helping one another. The greatest love that God wants us to demonstrate is to be our brother's keeper, not to destroy ourselves. When we destroy ourselves, we will not see the power of God. But when we support ourselves, as it happened in the acts of the apostles, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to pray for five hours. We don't have to dance ourselves out. As we go to the house of God and we lift our hands, we will see his glory and his power. God is among us. Let's do right. We can prophesy all we want. We can expect all that we want to expect. If we don't put ourselves right, we will not see the presence and the power of God. The first thing that Elijah did is to prepare the broken altar. The altar is destroyed. Let us prepare the broken altar. If we can prepare the broken altar, then fire will come from above. God desire to bring us heaven. God desire to bring us fire. God desire to bring us provision. God desire to bring us healing. God desire to bring us blessing. But the blessing will never come until the ground is prepared. Because the ground is a mess. The ground is a mess. People jubilate when people force them. People jubilate when people lie on people. It is about time. That we cry with people that are crying and laugh with people that are laughing. It is about time that we defend and cover one another. If we can do that, I guarantee you, very soon, we will see his presence and in his power in our life. God bless you. I continue to pray for you. I know that God is up to something great. Let us put ourselves together. Let us put our, 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 our house in order. Let us prepare ourselves. Anytime God say prepare, all that he's saying that make the path straight. Make the path straight because I'm about to come in, but I'm not coming to a destroyed house. I'm not coming to a crooked house. I'm coming to a house that is laid down for me to come in and to bless my people. I pray that his hand be strong upon your life, that his glory falls on you, May the Lord use and bless you according to his will. Until we are see, we are see you again next week. I'm Pastor Kwame. God bless you. Shalom.